Welcome to the new section of this course, Manipulating Functions in Functional Programming. In this section, we will look at topics such as applying the first class function in all functions, higher order functions in functional programming, and avoiding the side effect and reducing multiple arguments function. Now let's move on to the video, applying the first class function in all functions. In this video, we will take a look at passing a function as another function's parameter, then assigning a function to a variable, post that storing a function in the container, and finally creating a new function from the existing functions at runtime. Let's start with passing a function as another function's parameter. To understand this, we will look at the code. Here, we will pass a function as the function parameter. Also, we will choose one of our four functions and invoke the function from its main function. So now let's understand the code. As you can see, here we have defined a type of function named func type representing a function that pass two integer arguments and returns an integer value. Here we have defined four functions, that is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In the main function, we display manual for the user. Then we prevent the user to select unavailable modes. Here we get input from user for variable A. Next, we check the input validation for variable A. After that, we clear the input buffer to restore C in to a usable state. In line number 64, we ignore the last input. Here we get input from user for variable B. Then we do input validation for variable B. Post that, we clear input buffer to restore C in to a usable state. Next, we ignore the last input. So we have understood from this code that we have four functions and we want the user to choose one and then run it. So as highlighted here in the switch statement, we will invoke one of the four functions based on the choice of the user. We will pass the selected function to passing function. So here you can see we have passed additional function along with a and b variable to passing func. So it's time to compile and execute the code. First go to the terminal. Type in the command g plus plus seven first class one dot cpp std equals to c plus plus seventeen to compile the command. You can see our program is compiled successfully. Now just execute it using the dot slash a dot out. Cool, we have got the output as expected. Here, first we need to enter which mode is to be selected. I will select the multiplication from the available modes by typing three. Then we add the value r variable for variable a, and we can see we have got the warning stating you can only enter numbers. Then we again type e, and we can see we have got the warning again stating you can only enter numbers. Fortunately, the program rejects it since we have had the input validation. Next, we give value 4 to variable a and 2 to variable b. As we expected, the program gives us 8 as a result. It's time to move on to the next topic, that is, assigning a function to a variable. We can also assign a function to the variable, so we can call the function by calling the variable. So for that, we have refactored first class 1.cpp. To see the code, go to the Atom Editor and open first class 2, and in that, open the respective CPP file. This code is similar to the last code that we saw, except for the refactored part. As you can see in a switch block, we have assigned four functions based on user choice and stored the selected function in the func variable inside the switch statement. After the func variable is assigned with the user's choice, the code will just call the variable like it calls the function, as you can see here. And we will then obtain the same output on the console if we run the code. So now it's time to compile and execute the command. Let's go to our terminal. Navigate to the first class 2 directory. Then clear the screen with the reset command. Type in the command g plus plus seven first class two dot cpp std equal to c plus plus seventeen. After successful compilation, use dot slash a dot out to execute the code. Here again, you need to select the mode from four of the given options. So let's choose the multiplication mode again by typing three. Enter the variables for a and b as four and two respectively. Nice! The result as expected 8 is seen on the screen. 
This is similar to the output that we obtained on the console as the previous one. Next, we will be storing a function in the container. Now let's save the function to the container. Here we will use vector as the container. For this, open editor, open first class 3, and in that, click to the respective .cpp file. This is the entire highlighted code for you. In this code, we will use the vector s container for saving the function. We will use vector as container. We have some minor changes incorporated in the script. Starting with this as highlighted, here we will create a new vector named functions that are declaring a type of function named func type. Then we assign several func types to the vector that we store four different functions to it. Just like we did with our two previous code examples, we ask the user to select the mode as well. However, now the code becomes simpler. Since we don't need to add the switch statement, we can select the function directly by selecting the vector index. The rest of the code is similar to the previous code. However, since the vector is a zero-based index, we have to adjust the index with the menu choice. The result will be the same as our two previous code samples. So it's time to check if we are on the correct path. Compile the code by going to the terminal, then navigate to the directory first class 3, then use the reset command to clear the screen. Type in g++7, then name of the directory followed by std equals c++17 for the compilation. After the successful compilation, type in this command to execute the program. Now select the mode. The last time we selected multiplication operation. This time let's select the addition operation. So type in 1 and enter the values of the variables 2 and 4 in a and b respectively. Cool! We have obtained the output as 6 as expected. Hence we can conclude that the output we got is correct. Finally, we will be creating a new function from the existing functions at runtime. Now let's make a new function at runtime from the pre-existing functions. For that, open the first class 4 directory from the Atom Editor and select the respective .cpp file. This is the entire code for it. Let's understand the code in detail. You can see here we have defined a type of function named hyperbolic func, representing a function that passes a double argument and returns a double value. As we can see in this highlighted part, we have two function collection funks and inverse funks. Moreover, as we discussed previously, the inverse funks function is the inverse of the funks function. The funks function contains three built-in hyperbolic functions along with one user-defined function to calculate the squared number, whereas inverse funks contains three built-in inverse hyperbolic functions along with one user-defined function to compute the inverse of the squared number. By using these two collections of functions, we will construct one new function from them. To achieve this purpose, we will use the transform function to combine the two functions from the two different collections. As you can see, inverse funks has the collection, and then the funks collection. This is the new function collection stored in the composed funks as vector. Here we initialize vector nums, which will contain double elements, and with the help of this for loop, we will add the value using nums.pushback method. In this block of code, we iterate the collection and pass the value we have provided in the nums variable to this new function and then display the values. So, after the detailed explanation, let's see what the output of this program is. Now let's compile and execute the program. First we will navigate to the directory first class 4, then use the reset command to clear the screen. Use the same command as used earlier to compile the program, only the file name changes here. After the successful compilation, we need to use this command to execute the program. Excellent, we have obtained the required output. As you can see, whatever we pass to the transforming function, we will get the same output as the input. As highlighted here, you can understand that increment in the values. First we have obtained 0.2 as a value, then 0.4 and so on. Our values are incrementing, that is, it read the collection and passed the value, which we have provided in nums variable to our new function. Here, we can prove that C++ programming can be used to compose a function from two or more existing functions. So here we have come to the end of this video.